low knuckleheads. Lots to talk about, not a lot of time. I'm uh, taking a brief break. Brief break. Study break. Study break. People, big news. Big news. Lots, lots is. Lots of lots of things have happened since our last chat. One, I now have the stunningly high uh, subscriber count of like 400 in the teens. So that is that's funny and fun, and I'm happy to have everybody. Once I pass the bar exam, which I will be taking the end of this month, July 2024, uh, I promise for my own sort of like self evolution to upload a video that has at least two edits in it and break my streak of single take masterpieces. Uh, I, I thought I needed, uh, I'm so, I'm brain dead. I've been at it for, I don't know, a big full day and I've got more to do. So I said, Hey, let me take 10 minutes and, and show people a guitar that is cool. Look at this, look at this cool guitar. Look, it's a cool guitar for you to look at. This is my first Rickenbacker guitar. It's not my first Rickenbacker ever because a couple months ago I bought something that you haven't seen. Uh, I bought a Rickenbacker 4003 that is blue from 2017. I'm still getting to know it, um, but I do, but I do like it, and it absolutely makes the sound that I wanted it to make. And then... Uh, and then this guitar arrived on Craigslist and uh, locally to me. And nicely enough, it was being posted by somebody who was nearby with whom I had the pleasure of selling a guitar or having a guitar transaction with uh, prior I sold him uh, I sold him a, a Gretsch rock jet that was featured briefly uh, the little teardown that I did of it so this is a 1982 Rickenbacker 370 WB which stands for with binding and it's got three pickups. One, two, three. It's a, um, it's a semi, it's a full hollow. I don't know. I don't know. Rickenbackers are, um, not a place of expertise for me. Um, uh, but they have been a subject of interest for a little while. And, um, I usually buy, I buy, I buy instruments when, um, I buy instruments at different times for different reasons, but usually one of those, usually one of the main reasons is this instrument is a good enough deal that it would be silly to not buy it. And that is sometimes, sometimes I do that in a way that is designed to make me money. I know that it's not a guitar that I'm going to keep for the long term. Uh, and, uh, and other times, um, 
reselling a guitar is like really not on my agenda. I just know, or I can I can be reasonably confident that when I do need, when or if I do need to sell it down the road, I'm not gonna lose a thousand dollars. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat my shirt because uh, because I overpaid for something. I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna vomit into my own brown lunch bag and then eat that for lunch the next day because I have been conned by a charlatan who has convinced me a studio is a custom. Um, so, uh, uh, and I've got a pretty good track record. You do it for like long enough, you end up with. Um, Uh, some cool things. Anyway, this was, this was, I don't know how much money this should cost, to be honest. Um, but I knew that it really, really scratched the itch of, like, something that I wanted to experience, which is the other, which is, like, kind of like the other prong that is almost always there when I decided it's a good idea to buy an instrument. And usually both of those things need to be there at the same time. I need to be confident that I am underpaying by some negligible to substantial margin that's like a flexible that's that's a flexible variable and i also need to be interested in what it is because i want to uh because it can teach me something that i don't know um it can give me a sound that i recognize but haven't been able to reproduce myself it can um, be useful to somebody else who I know personally and I know has been like uh, after one. Like it just needs to be something that I do not resent seeing because I need to still be, ha it still has to have value for me. And by value, I don't mean monetary value. It still has to have value when it is sitting near me. Like, uh, so I can't be an angry moron mad at an in an inanimate object if it's taking a long time to sell or if somebody does want to buy it and then uh, you know, flakes or something like that like I, I only want to fuck with shit that I think is cool that is, that is basically that is basically the rule is only buy shit that suits your tastes or that you or, or that expands your tastes or expands your experience in such a way that develops your taste um, in a direction that you want to go so uh, so when this hit I loved that I was buying something that I didn't know a lot about from somebody that I knew was not a dirtbag and that I knew I enjoyed and I also was confident, relatively confident that like, okay, there's like, there's like roughly zero of these. Um, I don't think I'm going to lose my shirt on it. So I bit, I bit and, uh, and the neck is teeny. So here's some things that, here's some things about this guitar. The neck is, the neck is, the neck is a nice little tiny little neck. It's just so, it's very pleasant. And if this is the neck that is on 12 strings for Rick's, like, that's funny. Um, the other three, other 370s, uh, asterisks here, the, the model number conventions for Rick's, I don't really have memorized. And so I don't know if this, if all 370s are this shape and the WB denotes the additional aesthetic appointments or if this is a different number and the number itself is denoting the additional aesthetic appointments but usually guitars that are this shape have dot inlays lacquered fretboards uh and no um and like no additional binding as well as two pickups um otherwise i think we're dealing with the the same deal so this has inlays on the board binding uh just about everywhere and most of the lacquer that was originally on the fretboard has been played off. And the frets still have their binding nibs. And the frets are skinny. But the frets are also 
really, really unworn. So, maybe this was, and the fretboard itself definitely has been worn past the, like, the lacquer and into the wood. I don't think I'm looking at a refret, but if I'm not looking at a refret, I am looking at somebody who played the guitar with a conspicuously light touch and with, like, a decent amount of sweat. It sets up really well. It has a mastery bridge replacement on it, uh, according to the gentleman that sold me the guitar, the bridge of this guitar suffers the same kind of like uh, idiosyncratic non-reliability of um, other pieces of Rickenbacker hardware. Uh, and the, so, um, so it got replaced by the mastery and like all things mastery, it rules. I shouldn't say all things. I've only had one. I've only had one. Uh, a jazz master bridge, but it's a, it's the sort of thing where you're like, where you're thinking about buying one, and you're like, you know, it seems expensive, doesn't it? This just unscrews from the body. That's fun. Uh, the the master bridge seems expensive, and you're like, I don't. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm buying a whole vibrato, like assembly in a bridge. I'm gonna spend five hundred dollars. I'm about to put a five hundred dollars into a, into a thousand dollar. You know, Mexican made jazz master. You might be thinking to yourself, and then it arrives, and the damn thing solves all your problems. You have no more, you have no more problems left. You are looking for problems to have. And you're saying to yourself, fuck, I don't have any. I'm so happy that I just spent that $500 or whatever it was. And I didn't have to buy this bridge, which was cool, but holy shit, does it work perfectly. So great job, mastery. Uh, other things that are fun about... Well, I can't speak to all Rickenbackers. I can just speak to this Rickenbacker. What's well, kind of fun that this just this just kind of like flumps out, and then you're just looking at everything. This is a huge. The pick guard's this shape because there's that shaped hole in the guitar, and then you go flump, and then you can get all the wiring, and the and then you know the leads to all three pickups are just like right there. In what way does this differ from a two pickup version? I'm not sure, but I will try and recount the like wiring setup which one day uh i will play live this particular moment is not that moment because i need to get back to uh being able to list the substantive due the substantive due process rights that you and i uh currently enjoy under the united states constitution so we've got uh two volumes two tones but they are flip-flopped ignore this for a minute or ignore that button. A three three position selector. Uh, you volume neck, tone neck, volume bridge, tone bridge, and then uh, uh, and then you know surprise knob. Uh, surprise knob. What's it do? It's a surprise. Neck, volume and tone. That's all that's happening. Bridge, volume. And tone, but then also this is like swinging a middle pickup in a certain way. And when I say swinging, I mean when I roll it to where it would be ten, right? You're sort of moving the the knob, you're pulling it upwards, which to me points it down towards the bridge. And when you go like this, and you're pushing it down to like zero, you're sort of pointing it up to the neck and that is doing some kind of blending magic on the neck pickup um but for the life of me i can't tell if i'm hearing things in parallel or in series and I don't know. I'm now bored of my description of the electronics because I really shouldn't have bothered to talk about it until I was ready to show you about it. Uh, stereo output jack, uh, full spectrum, sort of like mono, and then that is your uh, 
I mean, I don't know if they call it Rico sound at this uh, uh, juncture. I've not tried to use two amps yet. Um, uh, it sounds, it's really fun to play. It sounds awesome. It's awkward to play because your only channels for no contact whatsoever with the pickups are these little canals. Um, but, uh, but that's not so bad. Uh, and it was really fun for the kind of like, you know, like just... Like non-palm muted... Downstrokey kind of... Oh, it just sounds... And like the 403, it just immediately produces the, the sound that you want it to and i'm lucky to have it and i look cool holding it and it looks cool sitting there and i'm happy to see it around and i also am a hundred percent sure that this is going to play a big role on uh the record that i start tracking in september and also um uh i will have another record out um in the middle of August, and um, and now I'm gonna continue my march towards um, you know accreditation as an attorney in the state of North Carolina.